Canada's new mortgage rules were announced to make home ownership easier for first-time buyers. But can they actually make housing more expensive in the long run? Let's break down the hidden long-term costs of these changes and why they might actually lead to even higher home prices, especially as rates drop. So let's start with the basics. Three major changes have been announced. So number one is the higher insured mortgage cap. So the insured mortgage limit has increased from $1 million to $1.5 million, meaning buyers in high cost cities like here in Toronto can qualify for bigger mortgages with smaller down payments. Now the second change, 30 year amortizations. First time buyers can now stretch their mortgage payments over 30 years, lowering their monthly payments, but and very importantly, extending the debt, which we'll get to in a minute. And then the third change is switching lenders made easier. So at renewal, buyers can now switch lenders without a stress test, which I love this change, opening up more options for better rates and increased competition amongst lenders. However, with all this good news, there's something here that they aren't telling you, which we'll get to in a minute. But let's look at why they're doing this. So in the short term, these rules can help in three key ways. So the first is lowering monthly payments. So by extending amortizations, buyers pay less month to month. The second thing is easier qualification. So lower payments means it's easier to qualify for larger loans. And then the third thing is more buying power. So the increased mortgage cap of $1.5 million allows buyers to look at higher priced homes in markets where often an entry level home starts at more than a million dollars, which is right here in the city of Toronto. So all of that sounds great, right? Well, not so fast. Here's where things start to get tricky. The government is focused on making carrying debt more affordable instead of addressing the real issue, which is making housing more affordable. So debt affordability doesn't equal housing affordability. By extending amortization periods to 30 years, they're lowering monthly payments, but this isn't making housing any cheaper. It's just making debt a lot easier to carry. A comparison chart showing interest paid on a $500,000 mortgage at 5% interest shows a 25 year amortization monthly payment is about 2,908 and the total interest paid is $372,000. On a 30 year amortization, a monthly payment is $2,684 but your total interest is $466,000. So you're paying an extra $94,000 in interest over the lifetime of the loan to save just over $200 a month. The government's focus on lowering monthly costs doesn't address the core issue. Home prices are still rising faster than wages and this change just spreads out your payments a lot longer. So in reality, this is more about making it easier to carry debt, as we said, rather than actually solving the underlying affordability crisis. So instead of focusing on actual cost of housing, the government is just making it easier to borrow more, which could then push prices even higher in the long run. And that leads to an even bigger problem. Increasing demand generally equals higher prices. So when more people qualify for bigger loans, demand surges. And as we just said, what happens when demand spikes but supply stays the same? Prices rise. So here's the thing. These changes might actually push prices higher, not lower, especially in already tight markets like Toronto and Vancouver. We've seen it happen before time and time again. More buyers armed with bigger loans will bid up prices in a market that isn't producing enough new homes fast enough. We're already in a housing crunch. The Canada Mortgage Housing Corporation, or CMHC, has estimated that we'll need 3.5 million homes by 2030 to bring prices back to reasonable levels. But right now, we're not building anywhere near that pace, and it's only getting worse. Now, to alleviate some of the negativity, there was one change in these new rules that could actually provide some much needed relief. And that's the removal of the stress test for renewals when switching lenders. So before, homeowners were often stuck with their current lender at renewal because requalifying under the stress test meant a much higher hurdle to try and switch lenders. Now, 
you can shop around for the best rate without having to requalify. This is a positive change that encourages more competition in the mortgage market. It's actually a step in the right direction and could save homeowners a lot of money over time. But this change alone won't solve the bigger issue. What you'll see a lot of in the news and what a lot of people think is that the solution to the housing crisis is simple. Just build more homes. But here's the thing, it's not just about supply. In cities like Toronto, we've seen a huge number of new condo development, for example, yet prices continue to rise. Why? Well, much of this new supply isn't going to people who need homes. Instead, these properties are being snapped up by investors looking to capitalize on rising real estate prices. So this investor-driven demand is inflating prices far beyond what the average person can afford. So while building more homes sounds like the solution, it doesn't address the real issue, affordability. The bigger problem is the erosion of purchase power. Even if you build more homes, if wages aren't keeping up with inflation and housing costs, people still can't afford to buy. Since the 2000s, wages have stagnated while the cost of homes has skyrocketed. We're seeing this even more post-pandemic with inflation eating away at people's ability to buy homes. So, the real crisis isn't just about supply, it's about how much people can afford with their wages. So in my opinion, to truly address this affordability crisis, we need to focus on solutions that enhance purchasing power and reduce the inflated costs of construction, and that's without letting developers off the hook. Right now, development charges and taxes placed on new builds are grossly inflating the cost of new homes and new construction. This leads to higher home prices that are passed directly on to buyers. But simply removing these charges isn't the answer, as it would just boost profit margins for developers without necessarily lowering prices for the end users. One possible solution is a tax rebate system, similar to the HST rebate for end users. In this model, homes built specifically for end users, not investors, could qualify for a rebate that the buyer applies for at closing. This way, the savings benefit the homeowners, not just the developers. This approach keeps developers accountable by ensuring the reduced costs actually translate to lower prices for the people living in these homes. It's a way to incentivize building for people, not just for profit. So by cutting some of these tax and development charges responsibly and pairing it with end user rebates, we can encourage more affordable builds without contributing to a profit-driven market that further inflates prices. This would ease construction costs, boost supply, and ultimately make housing more affordable for buyers. So while these new mortgage rules might seem like they're offering short-term relief, the bigger picture shows that they could end up making homeownership even more expensive over time for future generations. So the combination of higher demand and stagnating supply coupled with investor-driven markets could keep pushing prices higher and higher and higher, even as more people qualify for mortgages. What's really needed is a mix of long-term solutions that target both affordability and supply. We need more homes built for end users and policies that help people buy homes without being overwhelmed by long-term debt. Tax relief for developers who pass savings on to buyers, enhanced purchasing power programs, and a shift in how homes are used would go a long way in addressing the root of the housing crisis. So what, ultimately, what do you think? Are these new rules actually helping or are they just setting us up for higher prices in the future? Drop a comment below and let's discuss. If you're navigating this market and want to know more about how these changes might affect you, feel free to reach out. I'd, more than, I'd be more than happy to help guide you through the process. So remember, hit that subscribe button for more Real Estate Insights and we'll talk to you later. Peace out.